the period of one hundred and twenty years which God had appointed as the term of probation having expired, Methuselah died, but out of regard for the memory of this pious man God gave them another week's respite, the week of mourning for him. During this time of grace the laws of nature were suspended, the sun rose in the west and set in the east. To the sinners God gave the dainties that await man in the future world for the purpose of showing them what they were forfeiting. But all this proved unavailing, and, Methuselah and the other pious men of the generation having departed this life, God brought the deluge upon the earth. THE FLOOD On the day whereon they came to the ark, the sun was darkened, and the foundations of the earth trembled, and lightning flashed and thunder boomed as never before. And yet the sinners remained impenitent. In naught did they change their wicked doings during those last seven days. When finally the flood broke loose, seven hundred thousand of the children of men gathered about the ark and employed Noah to grant them protection. With a loud voice he replied and said, Are ye not those who were rebellious towards God, saying, There is no God? Therefore he has brought ruin upon you, to annihilate you and destroy you from the face of the earth. Have I not been prophesying this unto you these hundred and twenty years, and you would not give heed to the voice of God? Yet now you desire to be kept alive. Then the sinners cried out, So be it! We are all ready now to turn back to God, if only thou wilt open the door of thy ark to receive us, that we may live and not die. Noah made answer and said, That ye do now, when your need presses hard upon you. Why did you not turn to God during all the hundred and twenty years which the Lord appointed unto you as the term of repentance? Now do you come, and ye speak thus, because distress besets your lives. Therefore God will not hearken unto you, and give you ear. Naught will you accomplish. The crowd of sinners tried to take entrance to the ark by storm, but the wild beasts keeping watch around the ark set upon them, and many were slain, while the rest escaped only to meet death in the waters of the flood. The water alone could not have made an end to them, for they were giants in stature and strength. When Noah threatened them with the scourge of God, they would make reply, If the waters of the flood come above us, they will never reach up to our necks, and if they come from below, the soles of our feet are large enough to dam up the springs. But God bade each drop pass through Gehenna before it fell to earth, and the hot rain scalded the skin of the sinners. The punishment that overtook them was befitting their crime. As their sensual desires had made them hot and inflamed them to immoral excesses, so they were chastised by means of heated water. Not even in the hour of the death struggle could the sinners suppress their vile instincts. When the water began to stream up out of the springs, they threw their little children into them to choke the flood. It was by the grace of God, not on account of his merits, that Noah found shelter in the ark before overwhelming force of the waters. Although he was better than his contemporaries, he was not yet worthy of having wonders done for his sake. He had so little faith that he did not enter the ark until the waters had risen up to his knees. With him, his pious wife Nima, the daughter of Enosh, escaped the peril, and his three sons and the wives of his three sons. One animal, the reem, Noah could not take into the ark. On account of its huge size, it could not find room therein. Noah therefore tied it to the ark, and it ran on behind. Also he could not make space for the giant Og, the king of Bashan. He sat on top of the ark securely, and in this way escaped the flood of waters. Noah doled out his food to him daily through a hole, because Og had promised that he and his descendants would serve him as slaves in perpetuity. The difficulties were increased when the flood began to toss the ark from side to side. All inside of it were shaken up like lentils in a pot. The lions began to roar, the oxen loud, the wolves howled, and all the animals gave vent to their agony, each through the sounds it had the power to utter. Also Noah and his sons, thinking that death was nigh, broke into tears. Noah prayed to God, O oh Lord, help us, for we are not able to bear the evil that encompasses us. The billows surge about us, the streams of destruction make us afraid, and death stares into the face. O oh, hear our prayers, deliver us, incline thyself unto us and be gracious unto us. Redeem us and save us. The duration of the flood was a whole year. It began on the seventeenth day of Heshwan, 
and the rain continued for forty days until the twenty-seventh of Kislu. The punishment corresponded to the crime of the sinful generation. They had led immoral lives and begotten bastard children whose embryonic state lasts forty days. From the twenty-seventh of Kislu until the first of Siwan, a period of one hundred and fifty days, the water stood at one and the same height, fifteen ells above the earth. During that time all the wicked which were destroyed, each one receiving the punishment due to him. Cain was among those that perished, and thus the death of Abel was avenged. So powerful were the waters in working havoc, and the corpse of Adam was not spared in its grave. On the first of Siwan the waters began to abate, a quarter of an ell a day, and at the end of sixty days, on the tenth day of Ab, the summits of the mountains showed themselves. But many days before, on the tenth of Tammuz, Noah had sent forth the raven, and a week later the dove, on the first of Heathrow's sallies, repeated at intervals of a week. It took from the first of Ab until the first of Tishri for the waters to subside wholly from the face of the earth. Even then the soil was so miry that the dwellers in the ark had to remain within until the twenty-seventh day of Heshwan, completing a full sun year, consisting of twelve moons and eleven days. Noah had experienced difficulty all along in ascertaining the state of the waters. When he desired to dispatch the raven, the bird said, The Lord thy master hates me, and thou dost hate me too. Thy master hates me, for he bade thee take seven pairs of the clean animals into the ark, and put but two pairs of the unclean animals, to which I belong. Thou hatest me, for thou dost not choose as a messenger, a bird of one of the kinds of which there are seven pairs in the ark. But thou sendest me, and of my kind there is but one pair. Suppose now I should perish by reason of heat or cold. Would not the world be the poorer by a whole species of animals? Or can it be that thou hast cast a lustful eye upon my mate, and desirest to rid thyself of me? Whereunto Noah made answer, and said, Wretch, I must live apart from my own wife in the ark. How much less would such thoughts occur to my mind as thou imputest to me? The raven's errand had no success, for when he saw the body of a dead man, he set to work to devour it, and did not execute the orders given to him by Noah. Thereupon the dove was sent out. Toward evening she returned with an olive leaf in her bill, plucked upon the Mount of Olives at Jerusalem. For the Holy Land had not been ravaged by the deluge. As she plucked it, she said to God, O Lord of the world, let my food be as bitter as the olive, but do thou give it to me from thy hand, rather than it should be sweet, and I be delivered into the power of men. Though the earth assumed its old form at the end of the year of punishment, Noah did not abandon the ark until he received the command of God to leave it. He said to himself, As I entered the ark at the bidding of God, so I will leave it only at his bidding. Yet when God bade Noah go out in the ark, he refused because he feared that after he had lived upon the dry land for some time and begotten children, God would bring another flood. He therefore would not leave the ark, until God swore he would never visit the earth with a flood again. When he stepped out from the ark into the open, he began to weep bitterly at the sight of enormous ravages wrought by the flood, and he said to God, O Lord of the world, thou art called merciful, and thou shouldst have had mercy upon thy creatures. God answered and said, O thou foolish shepherd, now thou speakest to me. Thou didst not so when I adjust kind words to thee, saying, I saw thee as a righteous man and perfect in thy generation, and I will bring the flood upon the earth to destroy all flesh. Make an ark for thyself of gopher wood. Thus I spake to thee, telling thee all these circumstances, that thou mightst entreat mercy for the earth. But thou, as soon as thou didst hear that thou would be rescued in the ark, thou didst not concern thyself about the ruin that would strike the earth. Thou didst but build an ark for thyself, in which thou wast saved. Now that the earth is wasted, thou openest thy mouth to supplicate and pray. Noah realized that he had been guilty of folly. To propitiate God and acknowledge his sin, he bought a sacrifice. God accepted the offering with favor, whence he is called by his name Noah. The sacrifice is consisted of an ox, a sheep, a goat, two turtle doves, and two young pigeons. Noah had chosen these kind because he supposed they were appointed for sacrifices, seeing that God had commanded him to take seven pairs of them into the ark with him. 
The altar was erected in the same place on which Adam and Cain and Abel had brought their sacrifices, and on which later the altar was to be in the sanctuary of Jerusalem. After the sacrifice was completed, God blessed Noah and his sons. He made them to be rulers of the world as Adam had been, and he gave them a command saying, Be fruitful and multiply upon the earth. As a token that he would destroy the earth no more, God sent his bow in the cloud. Even if men should be steeped in sin again, the bow proclaims to them that their sins will cause no harm to the world. 